Good morning, welcome. Please stand and sing with us. Hello, hello, good morning. Good to see you. I am so grateful to be here with you today and to see all of your uh, faces in the sun, and I'm grateful that it didn't rain on us. So it is a, it is a good day um, to be together. Uh, welcome to the folks at Redeemer. Welcome to the folks at Christ Quest Community Church. It is a real gift uh, to be together. It's a real gift for us to share this space and to come together and to lift our voices together and to worship together and to continue to see and testify to the good work that Jesus does in our midst of tearing down walls 
and bringing uh, people together that sin and the world tries to separate. And so I'm really thankful to be here. Today is the, the Lord's Day, and it is God's goodness and it's his kindness to invite us and to call us to worship him. So why don't we hear this call to worship and respond together. From Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Let's pray together. Oh, Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace this morning uh, from so many different places. Some of us are overwhelmed, stressed, carrying burdens that no one else knows about, and we are tired. Others of us are refreshed, we're energized, eager to commune with you. Some of us are hurting, aching, 
carrying around wounds that no one else knows about. Others of us feel whole and healthy and restored in new ways. Some of us find ourselves doubting you, questioning why we're even here, not so sure about whether or not you're even there. Others of us feel more connected to you, have discovered your beauty and your wonder in different ways and in new ways, maybe even this week. But Father, we show up in all these different ways, and yet we have one thing in common, that we are in need of the blood of Jesus, and nothing can wash away our sin, nothing can make us whole again, nothing can pardon us except the blood of Jesus. And so, Father, would you give us eyes to see his cleansing blood in new ways? Would you enable us to feel our need afresh this morning? Would you give us the grace to rest on and receive Jesus once again? Enlarge our hearts that we might savor him and delight in him and find him more infinitely precious than we currently do. And so, Father, to that end, we want to lift up our voices together and pray the prayer that this Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning, so I'll I'll backtrack and do that now. My name is Matt Howell. I am one of the pastors at Redeemer and am so thankful to see you and to have you here. And we are really delighted to have Pastor Marlon Foster Uh, bring the word for us today and preach for us, and so you'll get to hear uh, from him later on, which is always uh, a gift and a real treat. But as we um, enter into this next portion of our worship service together, when anybody tends to encounter the glory of God, they become undone. All throughout the Bible, when people see and finally come into contact with who God is, they, they feel in a new way the depths of how unworthy they really are. And so in uh, Isaiah 6, when Isaiah beholds the glory of God, he says, woe is me for I'm a man of unclean lips. And in Luke chapter 5, when Peter sees the unveiled glory of Jesus in a new way, he says, depart from me for I'm a sinful man. And in Revelation chapter 1, when John sees the glory of God unveiled before his eyes, he, it says that he falls down at his feet as though dead. When we encounter the glory of God, that's what happens. We become undone. And so, for us, uh, we are invited in this next moment, as we have beheld and, and encounter the goodness and the glory of God, to also allow ourselves to be undone to name and to acknowledge that which is in us that makes us unworthy before his presence. And so if you're willing and able, I, I would invite you to pray this prayer of confession with us. Almighty God, you are rich in mercy to all those who call upon you. We have broken your holy laws by our deeds and by our words and by the sinful affections of our heart. We confess our disobedience and ingratitude, our pride and willfulness, and all our failures and shortcomings toward you and toward our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, and grant that we may serve and please you in newness of life through the merit and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when we are undone by our sin before God, how does he respond? What does he respond with? He always responds with mercy, with forgiveness. And so in Isaiah 6, God cleanses through his angels and heals the lips of uh, of Isaiah's sinful lips. In in Luke chapter 5, Jesus tells Peter, uh, do not be afraid. 
In, in John chapter 1, when, when, or in Revelation chapter 1, when John falls down at his feet before the glory of God, uh, King Jesus says, fear not. That is always his response. And so hear this response of his merciful pardon to us. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Thanks be to God. Because we have peace with God through Jesus, we can pursue and offer that same peace to one another. So may the peace of Christ always be with you. Why don't we take just a a quick moment and stand and pass the peace of Jesus to someone near you, maybe even someone that you don't know. So please, let's just take a minute, pass the peace of Christ to each other. Please make your way back to your seats and sing the doxology with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. All right, we're going to continue to sing together. With the Christ Quest Choir, please make your way to the stage.
on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Every praise is to our God. And I don't know about you, my day was complete just when my 17-year-old said Jesus that many times. I was all right then. I can go home. Amen. We're so grateful to be here on today. And please take your seats. Excited about our time here. This is such a blessing. Pastor Matt, Pastor Hal, to uh, Pastor Ben, to all of you, this Redeemer family, Christ Quest family. Such a blessing to be here. I had a couple of special guests here too, including a couple of my high school classmates. They just still tripping off of Marlon Foster, a preacher. <laughs> Shout out to Melrose, class of 1990, the heart of Gen X. But this is a beautiful day, and we this is a beautiful gathering. You look so good from this vantage point. I want to call your attention for our word on today. It's a familiar psalm for many, and it's Psalm number 100. Far hearing again. Our, our congregational text is the New Revised Standard Version, but I got my King Jimmy on today. Just I like the way it sounds when I read Psalms 100. But it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Come on, if you came with somebody, go ahead and grab them by the hand. We're going to do like we do at Christ Quest. Look at them square in the eye. Come on, you got them by the hand? Come on, squeeze it a little bit just to let them know you're alive. You look at them in the eye? Come on, look at them in the eye. And tell them, neighbor, with the Lord's help, our prayers and amens, the preacher's going to preach about call to the cause. Call to the cause. Come on, pray with me. Lord God, let the words of my mouth and even the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, thou art my strength, and thou art my redeemer. And all the people of God said amen. Amen, amen. We see on today, you all, the power of our fellowship, the power of men, women, and children coming together to be a, a representation of what Dr. King lifted up, which is the beloved community. You know, it started well over 10 years ago for us, and we're still yet holding on. And I've said this before, but since we are in Overton Park, I got to say it again, that it first hit me the power of what we were up to is when we were all there in Overton Park having a barbecue like we do so many, so often in Memphis. Many of you were there. But what intrigued me and what fascinated me and what challenged me is that people from Memphis came up to another fellow group of Memphians Nothing but a whole bunch of black folks and a whole bunch of white folks just, just having barbecue and having a picnic together. But what really stood out for me was the authenticity of the relationships because we got to know each other for a while. But for black folks and white folks to come together just to sit in fellowship and have fun together, and for people in our own city to find that strange and to say, what state are you all from? Really let me know that we're on to something great. Come on, give yourselves a hand because we're yet holding on, yet celebrating with one another. When we say call to the cause, a calling, and this is a, a simplistic Webster definition, but it says a strong inner pulse toward a particular course of action, especially when accompanied by a conviction of divine influence. Oh, we know that conviction well because we are gathering under divine influence. And cause simply says a principal aim or movement uh, that's developed because of a deep commitment and one is prepared to defend and advocate for it. 
as Christians, we're called to this cause, and the cause is Christ. We're called to not be comfortable in our faith, but continue to challenge ourselves in the faith, to continue to stretch ourselves in the faith. And contextually, this psalm is doing just that for us on today. Biblically, it follows the royal psalms in 93 and 95 through 100. And, and, and they're lifting up the sovereignty of God. And right after these royal psalms, we get to Psalms 100, which really gives us the so what? How many of your jobs, you know, you're there and you're in the conference room. And you really just want them to get to the so what? How often are we just really want folks to get to the what now? Well, this is it for those as a people of faith. It gives us this so what, this what now, if the children of Israel understood that the favor and blessings of God was on their life, and this was not just a benefit, but it was a responsibility. The Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it, it challenges us to take this good news like we're doing to Overton Park and to all of the hedges and highways and byways, and we have to understand the people of God that being pro-Christian is not being anti-anybody else. What is the so what about ecumenicalism, that you can have a church that's rooted in the Baptist tradition, one that's rooted in the Presbyterian tradition, and now that we have ecumenicalism down, where's the so what? How do we go from where we are now to continue to walk in what King challenged us is the beloved community? A community in which everyone is cared for. A community that's absent from poverty and hunger and hate. My challenge on today is that we continue to share the good news that the very calling and cause of our faith is that we might show some sign. The Israelites modeled it for us because they did it with a shout. How many folks were shouting on yesterday? I know we weren't shouting toward the end of the game, but, you know, early on we got a few shouts in. The psalmist starts by saying, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. I mean, we're called to this cause. We're called to this beautiful psalm because the verb in this text is of the imperative tense. That means it's a command for us to serve and a command for us to praise. Can I give you a couple of triplets and I'm going to soon take my seat? First triplet is that there are three calls and three causes for us to serve. Three calls and three causes for us to serve. The first call says, make a joyful noise. Again, they modeled this with a shout. They had joy even though life didn't always make them happy. Come on, happiness is always temporary. Happiness is like a hot bath. If you sit there long enough, you got to, you know, do like my wife, turn the hot water on again. Happiness is fleeting, but joy says no matter what goes on in your life, no matter what the circumstances are, I mean, even if you are, I mean, circumstances, you know, you know, I, I love words, and, and circle means a circle, and stands where you're standing. Sometimes in life, it will seem that you are totally surrounded by trouble. Sometimes in life, we feel like Job and just those negative messages, they just keep on coming. Sometimes in life, it seems like it's all tunnel and, 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 and no light. It seems like it's all dark cloud and no silver lining. But the joy of the Lord gives us great strength because even when we're not happy, we can be joyful. Amen. Come on, y'all did say with our prayers and amen. Come on, tell your neighbor again, it's a call and response experience. <laughs> Y'all know I like having fun, Redeemer. We see here is that, is that this first, you know, call is that we have to make a joyful noise. I mean, we can't be clandestine Christians. You know, I love James Bond with the best of them, but we can't be 007 Christians. You shouldn't be on the job and, and you say, oh, we're going to church and, and over the park on tomorrow. And your, and your co-worker says, I didn't know you were saved. <laughs> you go to church? We have to be upfront and excited about what we have. I mean, if we find out that there is a sale at Kroger, if we find out there is a sale at Dillard's, and we can't wait to tell all of our friends about this good thing that we have ran upon, and if we have the key to life. On an airplane one time, and, and you know how it is when you sit on an airplane, and, and folks always want to know what you do. And, and, and I said, oh, I teach folks how to live forever. <laughs> And you know, I caught this guy with a big pause. Okay, what, what, what do you mean you teach folks? You know, thinking I'm some super or something. And, and I say, no, I'm a Christian minister. 
That's the gift that we have. We have a gift of eternal life. I mean, if we knew that we had something that could give joy, that could sustain us through whatever came in us, surely we want all of our family members to be saved. Surely we want all of our friends to know the Lord. Surely we want our neighbors and our co-workers to have an experience that we have. The first call was to make a joyful noise. The second call was to serve the Lord with gladness. Y'all, serving feels so good, we have to really even self-regulate to make sure we're not serving for ourselves. That's how good service feels. Altruism just makes us feel so good just to be a giver. We have to self-regulate to make sure we're not doing it for ourselves. When we serve the Lord with gladness, it's not just a benefit to those that we are serving, but the primary benefit is to those who serve. Serve the Lord with gladness. The third call is to come before his presence with singing. It is an expression of our unified joy in praise. But then there are some causes of why we're going to do this. The first call says, for the Lord is God. Know ye that the Lord is God. This know ye has this whole idea of, yeah, we know, but even when we don't know, we know. Have you ever been where you know that you know that you know? That's what this text is saying. It's saying that there's also this futuristic idea that, yeah, we know God in our lives. We know that God has moved in a mighty way, but we're yet trusting God even beyond this day that God will be the same in our lives. And sometimes the Christ quest, I say, is is between that already and not yet. When we know that, that the Lord is God, we can, we can already know what the end is going to hold out, even though we're in this place in between. I mean, let me make it plain. We can know that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, but but even when we're in an experience where we don't feel God being close right now, it's an idea of us knowing that that, that, that healing is on the way, even though we've got a negative doctor's report. It's an idea of knowing that the cupboard is getting low, but, but, but also knowing that Jehovah Jireh, Jesus, is our provider. He says, know ye that the Lord is God, The second cause is that it is he that has made us. We have a creator God, and the good news is is that we all have some God stuff within us. In the beginning, when when God spoke in in, in, in creation, everything that God spoke to, there was an essence of what God spoke to that was built into what it was. God spoke to the firmness and the the greatest star, the sun, and then all of the smaller stars began to together. God spoke to the ground and, 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 you know, animals came forth and flowers came forth, you know, spoke to the sea and veg- and, 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 and fish came forth. And, and, and then it gets to the part where God spoke to God's self in the triune Godhead and said, let us create humankind in our own image. That means that there's a part of us that goes back to the ground. There's a part of us that also goes back to God. God is the one who has made us, so we know that we have been made in the image of God. And if there's anything that the enemy wants to do, is that's to not allow us to see ourselves in the image of God. To put mud on our faces, and we're not good enough, and and, and we're not qualified enough, and we don't have enough. And if I I just would have been born, you know, with family money, if I just would have been born with, had parents with a couple of alphabets behind their name, if I just would have been born on that side of the tracks, and it's all designed to create an image that's not the image of God. But we can rejoice with jubilance on today because we have God stuff within, and we have all been made in the image of God. Come on, that deserves a hand clap of praise. But the third cause is that God is our shepherd. Jesus called the, the, the good shepherd and, and, and the great shepherd. And, and as people of God, we can't allow the world to get us distracted by a patch of grass and that we might leave the pasture. Come on, there's a reason that we were referred to as sheep. Y'all do know sheep have short memories. You know, you take your dog and try to, you know, take him across town and that dog will soon find his way back home. But we can take a sheep around the corner and they'll never find their way back. And many times our memories are are, are limited and we forget about how awesome God has been in our life because I can look at my life and now me and my wife, we can go on a vacation. And I can forget about those first five years of marriage when we were happy just to go down the street. 
You know, we would just take our kids to Best Buy. We couldn't afford iPads, but we'd go in Best Buy and just go on and play with it, and we'll have a good time. Leave about an hour later. We would go to Wally World, that's what we call Walmart, and our kids would just be, yeah, ride that bicycle, check out that scooter. We didn't have much money, and after an hour and a half, they're tired, and we're ready to go home. Had spent a dime. We would go downtown to the park with a, with a picnic basket and a couple of cold cuts, and we could go on vacation, but we do just like we were doing now and have a great time. We see here is that, you know, we are God's people. We cannot be distracted by a patch because of what we don't have or what we do have. We have to know that you can have low social capital, but if you know God, you have the proper hookup. Let me give you my final triplet. Finally, y'all, there are three calls and three causes for us to praise. The first thing is that the first call says enter into its gates with thanksgiving. Y'all see that? That means is that it enters courts with praise. Can you imagine if all of us, as soon as we turned off Poplar Avenue, we were already giving God thanksgiving. As soon as we got into the gate. Can you imagine if we were walking down the lawn, you know, this is the court, and we were already praising God coming into the court. Or do we think, wow, folks are going to think I'm strange if I'm praising God and shouting hallelujah walking through this grassy field. But what's even more challenging is that would we ourselves think that we are being strange if we gave public praise to the Lord? This next call says, not only that, but, but, but we have to, it says, be thankful unto him and bless his name. See, the children of Israel, they would give a thank offering as a part of this jubilant celebration. So they would literally be giving a thank offering while they were giving thanksgiving. I mean, it was thanksgiving and thanksgiving. They said, be thankful unto him and bless his name. And many times we know prayers of supplication. You know, that's when we treat, you know, God like Santa Claus and just sit in God's lap and beg for a whole lot of stuff. We got that one down. You know, we know prayers of, of lament when we are hurting and there is a loss. We know, we know prayers of intercession when I'm praying for someone else. But what about those prayers of thanksgiving? My challenge on the day is that when you pick up prayers of thanksgiving, you'll forget all about that supplication. I mean, you'll start your day off, and, and you will just be waking up, and you'll start, oh, I thank God that, that I've lived to see another day, as my mother calls her friends. And, and they say, I'm just calling to make sure you didn't wake up dead. We'll start off just giving thanksgiving that we're alive, and, and then when we get out of the bed, and, and then we can, we can move to the light switch, we'll begin to thank God that we have movement and activity of our limbs. And when we look in on our children, we'll see their chests yet rising and falling, and we'll begin to thank God that our children are well and all is okay. And, and when we go into the kitchen and hit the light switch, for some folks, we're going to start shouting right there. That means that the utilities are on. I know some of y'all ain't been there, but some of you have, and we'll start praising God. And when you get out to the car, and first of all, if you're in South Memphis like me, you're happy that the car is still there, and you're praising God. And then when you turn the ignition and the car cranks up, you start thanking God all over again. And when you Make it all the way to over the park. You come down the grassy hill and you're giving thanksgiving because the Lord is good. Not only that, you all, but, but this other, you know, this, this other call is not only to be thankful, but to bless his name. Let me close with the three causes behind our praise. It says, for the Lord is good. I know we say, you know, good, better, best, but, but, but in Genesis, good is of the highest state, and God is good. I was waiting on that all the time. We, the cause is because God is good. The second cause is that because his mercy is everlasting. See, God is eternal, and God lives outside of time, but his mercy is everlasting. Like our, 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 our prayer for pardon on today is we have an everlasting God whose mercy never runs out on us. The cause is because his mercy is everlasting, but finally it's because his truth endures for all generations. Come on, facts change every day. The fact is I have on a blue jacket, but, you know, uh, the fact is yesterday I didn't have on a jacket, but the truth is I wear clothes. That means that there are some truths in God that never change. No matter what the fact of life is, that we can come to Psalms 100 with gleeful joy, recognizing that this call to praise and this call to serve has some causes behind it that are justified. 
God's truth endures for all generations. That means mamas and daddies, when you praise God, you're going to train your children. They need to praise God. Come on, y'all, stand on your feet. Help me close out this sermon. We're going to give God some praise because his truth endures to all generations. Everybody in Overton Park might not be saved, but we ought to give God some praise. They know there are some saved folks in Overton Park. There are some people that God has shined upon that love the Lord and that loves everyone outside of the faith because it says all ye lands. So it's not a, it's not a secret club or society. It's something we want to share with everyone. I'm going to the Grizzlies game a little later today, and there's something about when that guy makes a spectacular move to the basket. I jump out of my seat, and I shout. There's something about that, that long-distance three-pointer, and I jump out of my seat, and I shout. And if John Morant has not saved my soul, I love Bane, but if Bane has not made me whole, if, if I'm here and over the park, and Jesus Christ, my elder brother, is the only one that, that picked me up, that dusted me off, that made me clean, surely I won't be ashamed to give God some praise. Come on, give God a great big hand. Come on, praise. Let the Lord know that we love God and we're excited about it. God bless you. God keep you. This is our call and this is our cause. Amen. You may be seated. I wanted to read a, a, a quick scripture for us here today from Ephesians 4, starting in verse 4. It says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And that's why we're here this morning. We're here this morning because there is one thing that unites us. There is one truth that holds us together, no matter how different our individual lives may be, how, no matter how different the facts of our lives may be, as, as Pastor Foster reminded us. But there is, is one Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you're here this morning and you are His, if you have believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, then this table is for you to come and to eat of this bread that represents his body and to come drink of this cup that, that represents his blood. This table is not Redeemer's table. It's not a Presbyterian table. It's not Christ's quest table, and it's not a Baptist table. This is the Lord's table for all of his children. If you're here this morning and you are his, come eat and be reminded. Come eat and be strengthened together. Now, maybe you're here and that's not you. You don't uh, believe in the Lord Jesus. You, you don't call yourself his. You don't trust in him for salvation. We're glad you're here. And this table is, is big enough for as many people as who wish to come, but this table is for those who say, I need Jesus. I need his blood. I need his forgiveness. I need his hope. But, so but as we prepare to come to this table, though, for those of us who know that we are his, for those of us who need to be reminded that we are his, let's join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. It's another one of these call and responses that Presbyterians love, okay? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we come to this table because we are people who need you. You are our good heavenly father. You are our elder brother. You are the spirit that moves inside of us. And Father, I pray that it is by that spirit you would take ordinary bread this morning, Lord, and that you would take ordinary grape juice and that you would use it to minister to your people, to remind us and to apply the work of Jesus into our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Scriptures tell us that it was on the night that our Lord was betrayed. He gathered with his disciples, and after he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Sisters and brothers, let's declare all together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Well, if I can invite uh, Pastor Marlins up here already, if I could get Pastor Matt up, up front with me as well. The way this is going to work um, is we will... Uh, both of, both of these two ministers will have uh, some trays of, of the elements in front of them, and I'll have the, uh, the gluten-free version in the middle uh, for those of you who, uh, the select few of you who need that. But come, uh, get all, take the elements, they're in the, uh, the, the prepackaged form, so I'm going to ask you to take those elements and then return to your seats. Redeemer, this is a little different than the way we normally do it, but take those elements, return to your seats, and then we will... Uh, we'll consume those all together. So let us uh, join together. You go ahead and you can uh, come on forward and find these elements.
Well, if you would, peel off that first layer of clear plastic to find uh, the, the cracker within, and let us all take together. This is the body of our Lord that was broken for you. Let's eat of it together. And now peel off the, the second layer to find your juice. This is the blood of our Lord spilt for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it. Well, as those disciples left that meal with our Lord and Savior Jesus in singing, we're going to do the same together today. So if you would, rise and let us sing our, our final song together. Thank you all again so much for being here. It's kind of our tradition at Redeemer to end with a dismissal and then a, a, a benediction. I'm going to do the dismissal and then invite uh, Pastor Marlon to close us out with a, a final word, a good word, a, a benediction as we go. As we go, let us go forth to serve our city and the world as those who are loved by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Pastor Marlon, would you be willing to close us out? God bless you, Pastor Matt. For our hearing, Ephesians 3rd chapter, 17 through 19, for our benediction. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth 
and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week. Thank you.